Welcome to the Tough Decisions Network for Entrepreneurs. I'm Dan Hanford, and my wife, Danae, and I interview successful people sharing stories behind tough decisions that they've had to make along their journey as an entrepreneur. On the podcast with us today is Kimberly Scott. She's the host of Industry Celebrities Podcast. Welcome to our podcast. Thank you for having me. Hi, Kimberly. We are looking forward to talking with you, and we would love for you to get us started and just kind of tell us a little bit about where your focus is right now and maybe give us a little bit of detail as to your journey and how you got there. Okay, sure. So my focus right now is Industry Celebrities Podcast, where I'm asking all sorts of professionals to help me hone my interview skills. I ask them several different questions, making it short and sweet, and at the same time, you know, learning more about not just my friends in the multifamily industry, but also learning a lot about people in other industries. And while I do that, I am doing research for an Alexa skill that I am creating to help caregivers of those who are caring for people with dementia, Alzheimer's dementia, it's kind of... Um, encompasses the dementia umbrella. So any memory loss folks and just it, that all came about because my mom was diagnosed in 2013 when she was about 65. So she's uh, physically healthy, just has no short-term memory. So I want you to tell us a little bit, I know what an Amazon or an Alexa skill is, but can you briefly describe what an Alexa skill is for our audience? Sure. So are you familiar with the, like the Echoes, the shows, yes. uh, Google Home, any of those? Mm -hmm. yep. Well, in order for them to work, it is attached to an app on your phone. And then that app is attached to the, the Echo or the show or whatever it is. And when you play games or you have a skill, a briefing, you have to go into the app on your phone to enable it for it to work on the device of the Echo, the show or whatever you have. And skills can be anything. There's, you know, playing games, there's briefings, there's news, there's, you name it, there's a lot in there. <laughs> so people could just choose which one of these skills that they want to play or, you know, you know interact with. Interact yes. with. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. So I want you to walk us through first a tough decision that you've had to make as an entrepreneur that first off did not have that good of an outcome. I like to call it the sore thumb tough decision and kind of walk us through some lessons that you might have learned through that tough decision. Well, okay. So I started a company in 2003 that the niche was uh, video production uh, and we catered to the multifamily apartment industry. We grew to about 2.2 in revenue and that was after raising capital. A great, we had about 20 employees and at some point we decided that we needed, you know, our investors wanted out, wanted us to repay them. We wanted to figure something out. We couldn't figure out the something so we decided we were going to sell. So that way, because they wanted to do a wrap up, we were like, we don't want to do that. That's not, you know, no way, Jose. And so we made the decision that we would go and sell the company for the greater good, you know, so that our employees, you know, had life, our product could grow, you know, we could have some relief, you know, in the responsibility avenue <laughs> and just support overall support for both our employees and our clients and our product. So. We uh, sold in 2017 and that transition didn't go very well. We left uh, four months thereafter, I guess. It happened in January, we left in June. So it didn't have the best outcome for us, me and my business partner, but it definitely had a better outcome. You know, it was for the greater good of, of our employees and our clients. What would you say is something that you could have done differently to have a different outcome? Um, that's tough because I don't feel like you don't know what you don't know. And if I could have done it differently, maybe it would have done it with a different company. Mm -hmm. Um, even though we had been looking for a while, but maybe with different investors altogether, you know, like I always tell people, if you go and get investment, make sure it's with like-minded individuals that share the same goal. Uh, and we didn't have that just, just out of circumstance, we, our investors were kind of detached and didn't ever think we were going to make any money. <laughs> so when we started making money, it, it just, 
our, we weren't aligned anymore. You know, they wanted out and we didn't want out. So. So the biggest lesson is when you're going out to look for investors, make sure that you find investors that are aligned with your same values, almost like, you know, bringing them on as a partner because they really are, even though they might be more of a kind of a silent partner or kind of a passive type partner, they still need to be aligned with your particular values so that they can, you know, make the decisions that are in the greater good of the company versus just in general, correct? Yes. But things change, you know, we stretched a million dollars over three years and technology changes, you know, everybody's life happens. So you definitely having them check in more often would have been, you know, and making sure that we were continually on the same page, Mm -hmm. which is is always a good thing. We should have focused more more on active instead of just passive with that investment. Absolutely. So let's pivot here and talk about a tough decision that you had that had a really good and positive outcome, or maybe an outcome that was even better than you had expected and some lessons you learned through that one. Well, in the the selling process, the best outcome for me was that I discovered that I had a new passion, you know, and definitely had a, um, when you run hard for 15 years, (laughs) it, it definitely wears your mind and body down. And the best thing for me was that I found a new passion and the best thing that also came out of it was our employees, you know, had jobs that they wanted them. And because the company that purchased us was then also acquired by another company, you know, there shortly after we left, you know, the new company, that's where our majority of our employees have stayed and they're thriving and growing stock options. You know, they're just, they're, they have different departments that they can choose from, you know, even though it is corporate, it's still, you know, for those that want to stay have definitely been thriving in it. So overall, I feel like it turned out the way it was supposed to. Can you talk a little bit about the strategies that you use when you're facing a tough decision, how you come to a place where you're ready to move forward in a a specific direction when you're faced with a really difficult choice? Well, I breathe first. (laughs) And then I don't text, email, I don't do anything, but just kind of think through everything in my my head and make a phone call to a friend or a mentor or somebody that I know is going to give me straight, non-biased feedback, not somebody that's just going to tell me what I want to (laughs) hear. And, and then, you know, I give it about eight hours, you know, sleep on it for sure. And then make the decision with a clear head and non-emotion in a non-emotional state. All right, we're going to take a quick <laughs> break and hear from one of our show sponsors. When we return, we're going to talk to Kimberly about some of her favorites as it relates to her life as an entrepreneur. Have you ever thought about investing in real estate but find yourself so busy that you don't have time for it? Do you have FOMO, which is the fear of missing out? At hanfordcapital.com We help investors with passive real estate investments that project better returns than traditional investment vehicles such as the stock market. If you'd like to find out more about our passive real estate investments, visit HanfordCapital.com. That's H-A-N-D-F-O-R-D Capital.com. We will jump on a call with you to discuss your investment goals and to see if our investments are a good fit for you. This advertisement is not to be construed as an offer or recommendation to buy or sell a security. Visit HanfordCapital.com. All right, we are back with Kimberly, Kimberly Scott. I want you to talk to us first in this series of quick questions and answers that we like to call the trifecta on what is your favorite technology that you use in business that helps make your life easier as an entrepreneur? Well, when you said that, I was like the cam scanner. It's an app that goes on the phone. It's technology and it's helping me get paperless. (laughs) I can scan anything and file it, you know, put it in a folder on my desktop or Google Drive. And that definitely has been very helpful in my world. And the Alexa show, I'm listening to a lot of podcasts from the Alexa show as well. So that... Do you say it's an app for your iPhone, the cam scanner? It's, it's iPhone or Android. Yeah, cam scanner. Huh. You, it, okay, you, don't, you don't need your old fashioned... I mean, it, it's your scanner on the go is the best way to put it. And there's a free version and then there's a paid version, obviously. Okay. What's a quote that you've read or heard that's helped you as an entrepreneur? If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. (laughs) 
<laughs> and what about a book that you've read that you'd recommend to our audience? Crushing It by Gary Vee. And what's the next thing for you right now on your vision or your dream board? To have a full-blown skill that helps caregivers of dementia patients in their brand new day every day, that they have something to lean on, listen to, reference when they're going through that struggle. You know, a lot of individuals all over the world are having to deal with dementias, a disease that's only getting worse and not going away. And this skill, just to be, just, just to want to make sure it's, I'm clear, is it just for the Amazon Alexa and the Echo, or is it for any of the interactive devices like the, the Google um, One and stuff like that? I'm starting with the Alexa first because that's what I have, and then eventually I will have to develop it for the other devices. That's a part of my research and development to find out if they carry over, you know, if it can be easily converted all that. So sort of a cross platform. Yes, a cross platform. Have no idea just yet, but I will <laughs> hopefully in it less than a next couple months, I'll know. <laughs> well, how can the listeners reach out to you to start to follow you more and, and get some more information about you? They can search iTunes, YouTube, Facebook, Kimberly D. Scott, and follow me on all those channels, Insta, LinkedIn. Yeah, Kimberly D. Scott. It's there's a lot of Kimberly's in the world, but Kimberly D. Scott <laughs> seemed to be the one that was the easiest. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> My well, middle name. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast with us today. We really appreciated you being on and look forward to, to following you more as you continue to grow your podcast and as you continue to develop that Amazon Alexa skill. And, you know, I look forward to having you on a future episode as you continue to grow. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you all for having me today. Thank you for listening to the Tough Decisions Network. Be sure to visit toughdecisions.net to gain access to show notes for this episode and to join our free weekly entrepreneur email where we will send you news about the latest technology for your business, inspiring quotes, and the latest books for entrepreneurs. That's toughdecisions.net.